Radio. With great frequency comes great responsibility. Mass production of cheap newspapers helped unite and inform the populace of a growing nation. But at what price? Keeping abreast of the public discourse through newspapers took a great physical toll on the citizenry. The journey to purchase the paper, the turning of its many pages, to say nothing of the looking. And what of the illiterate? Shouldn't the people least capable of making informed decisions have equal say? Something had to give, and that something was radio. Through the magic of radio, people could stay informed without having to read. They could listen while remaining sedentary, with their eyes closed, perhaps gnawing on a delicious shank of lamb. Radio transformed democracy. Not only was news and information now available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but the birth of nationwide networks meant people in San Francisco were listening to the exact same broadcast as people in Baltimore, though, of course, they gated up for San Francisco. The new medium offered not only such wildly popular radio shows as The Shadow, Fibber McGee, and Uncle Petey's Old Time Sound Effects Hour, but also high-quality broadcast journalism, from such noted correspondents as Edward R. Murrow and Crazy Hindenburg Guy. But perhaps the biggest change ushered in by radio was the expanded role of corporate sponsorship. Large companies not only paid for advertising time, but often sponsored entire shows, demanding input over content along the way. More than one analyst of the day lamented how the influence of Chesterfield cigarettes besmirched the creative integrity of the hilarious minstrel show Amos and Andy. Indeed, an important precedent was being set. Corporations would henceforward have a hand in disseminating information to the public. Would those hands be used to gently push information along, massage it a little, or throttle it to within an inch of its life? That would be left to a new medium to decide. TV. Shiny, pretty TV. Mass production of cheap radios helped unite and inform the populace of a growing nation. But at what price? The radio's over-reliance on words had forced Americans to connect mental image to narrative. The country's imagination was dangerously well-developed at the very moment we needed not to think about what dropping an atomic bomb on someone might look like. Couldn't anyone create a device that would numb not just one, but all our senses? So information concerning our government could be absorbed by osmosis in the course of gathering the family to watch a funny man in a dress. Finally came the breakthrough mankind had been waiting for, television. Hypnotic, absorbing, shut the hell up, kids, can't you see I'm watching Sullivan? Television. Exactly where television originated is a mystery, though most scholars believe Prometheus stole it from the gods and gave it to the RCA Victor Company. In any case, TV quickly asserted itself as the dominant medium of the 20th century, overtaking newspapers, radio, and the film industry while simultaneously barring ugly people from ever participating in civic life again.